The week 13 waiver wire is tricky as heck. There could be anywhere from like zero to 14 good, really good running back pickup because there's injuries and then there's injuries to the guys who came in for those original injured players. But they might not be injured anymore. They might be deep fake injuries. So we're going to go through the backfields of San Francisco and the backfields of Jacksonville and the backfields of Pittsburgh. And guess what? The number one waiver wire pickup this week is not even a running back. All right. So things are tricky. And when things get tricky, we tuck our shirts in. We stop yelling. We get a big old fucking bowl. And we eat. One player we know for sure that is out this upcoming week, probably multiple weeks, is Mr. Damian Harris, which leads Ramondre Stevenson to take over as the bell cow this week. And Prize Picks currently has his rushing yard line against Buffalo on Thursday night for 60 and a half yards. Ramondre is an incredulous runner. He is awesome. He's going to get 18 plus carries. Jamal Williams just did it against Buffalo. They've had many running backs go over the 60 yard mark. And now it is all Ramondre Stevenson's. He's going to catch a lot of balls, but he's going to he's going to run and run and run and run and run. This is a lock right here. All right. So go to Prize Picks. Go download the app. First link in the description. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit for the first time. And they're going to double whatever you put down. You put down 20, you'll have 40 to play with and so on and so forth. Let's talk about some of the injuries. But first, we'll just talk about Traylon Burks, who is probably owned in your league. But if he is not, this is who you drop the dime on. All right. This dude has pretty much broken out since he's come back from his injury. He's the number one target there. He's leading the team in targets multiple weeks over. He is leading the team in production. He is getting the deep targets. And if this offense ever gets it together and they keep the chains moving, Traylon Burks is going to have monster weeks down the stretch where you can throw him into your lineup as a flex play week in and week out. This is like the premier example of second half breakouts for rookie wide receivers. He is exactly the type of player that would do it and would go bonkers in the last six games of the season. Let him help you win the hardware. All right, let's move on to the running backs. And, and my waiver wire rankings, along with fab budget suggestions and number one waiver wire usage, is up on the site right now, bdge.co. Become a Big Dog member, and you will have access to these. The rankings are very much in flux right now because we don't know the injury statuses of a lot of players. So if you do end up subscribing and you are following along for the weekly waiver wire stuff. These will be moving frequently throughout the week as injury news drops today, tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just talk about it at a high level, right? Najee Harris last night left the game with an oblique injury. It could be anything from a hernia to like rib injury. So it might take a minute for us to actually know what's going on with him. Maybe as of this recording or by the time you see it, we have more defined news. With Najee Harris out, we had Benny Snell and we had Anthony McFarlane. I fucking love Anthony McFarlane. He was one of my favorite players coming out in that draft, but Pittsburgh has shown this undying love for Benny Snell for whatever reason. The guy stinks. The guy is literally just three yards in a pile of horse shit every time he touches the ball, but they like to use him. They split the snaps pretty damn evenly. You'll see from this tweet, I think it was like 28 to 21 in favor of Benny Snell. McFarland has the explosiveness, but the bigger part of the picture here is Jalen Warren has missed multiple weeks now with his hamstring injury. He didn't practice at all last week, which would make me lean on the side of skepticism for him playing in this upcoming week, but it is a juicy matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. Typically, a player will have like a limited practice coming off these lingering muscle injuries, these tissue injuries, and then they start to get uh, more practice in week by week. He has not practiced yet, so it feels like he's a little bit a ways off still, but if he does play, if he's the guy in Pittsburgh's backfield, he's the he's the guy that you blow your fucking budget on because he is the most explosive. He is a really good pass catching back. He has shown just an amazing talent this year behind Najee Harris. So if they give him the workload against Atlanta, he's it'll be hard for me to rank many, many running backs above this dude. If he doesn't play again, you go Benny Snell. I would pick up Anthony McFarlane because the matchup and because how much they get the running backs involved in this offense. You start Snell because he'll have the goal line opportunities. I think Anthony McFarlane could be used as a flex play, but I'm not really going over the top on either of these guys because I think if either Warren or Najee steps back on the field, those guys get the rock ahead of these other two like immediately. We look at the Jacksonville backfield. We have Travis Etienne leaving with this foot injury. Apparently it's not that serious and he has, you know, a good chance of playing this upcoming week. They do play against Detroit. So if he is out, Jamichael Hasty took over as like the workhorse here on Sunday. He caught a lot of passes, was not very efficient in the ground game. He's a smaller, more explosive back, so I don't really expect him to get all the carries on early downs. 
I would expect, even though Snoop Connor didn't get a lot of touches in this game, if he's active, he'll get some touches. But Darrell Henderson also signed from the practice squad up to the active active roster, and he will be playing against Detroit. So I think it'll be some sort of committee between Hasty, Darrell Henderson, Snoop Connor, which makes things really, really, really messy. Um, but I think if I had to choose one of those guys, like I like Hasty, I think Darrell Henderson will be a surprise, like decent fantasy option this week, actually. Uh, so I think both Hasty and Snoop Connor are worth a pickup, but that's only if ETN does not play. And yeah, as of two hours ago, Travis ETN has a foot sprain, should play versus the Lion. Uh, that's like a catch 22 there. There's good and bad in there. Uh, don't love it. Obviously, if ETN is playing, he's in your lineup. I don't think you can trust the other guys behind him, but keep a very close eye on those backfields. There's a lot more still to discuss here because we have Josh Jacobs apparently dealing with a calf injury. They're hoping he could play, but he might not play. They play against the Chargers on Sunday. So Zamir White is a very sneaky pickup that a lot of your league mates probably won't be looking at. Hopefully Josh Jacobs plays, but if he does not, Zamir White actually becomes a really, really strong priority pickup this week. The San Francisco backfield, also tricky. So we have Christian McCaffrey hurting his knee. We have Elijah Mitchell hurting his knee. He's going to be out for six to eight weeks, but Christian McCaffrey has a good chance, I think, of suiting up this week. If he doesn't, though, Jordan Mason got the rock over and over again when those two were out. So he becomes like the next guy up. They'll obviously promote like a Tyrion Davis Price from the practice squad, most likely, and then it'll probably be a committee there. But Jordan Mason seems like the next guy up. He'll probably be more of like a desperate flex play if C-Mac misses time. If C-Mac plays, obviously you're not playing any of the backups behind him, and C-Mac is the guy there, and he'll probably have bell cow usage. The other interesting note here is Kansas City. So Pacheco has taken over as the guy, but he hasn't been great on the ground. They gave Ronald Jones about four carries, and they were like, fuck this dude, we got to go get Melvin Gordon. So Melvin Gordon signed to the Chiefs practice squad. I think this is an under-the-radar move. I don't think... Melvin Gordon's been that bad this year. I think the Denver Broncos offense is terrible. I think their offensive line is really bad. And I think it's made him look worse than he actually is because he was really good last year. And I still think Melvin Gordon is talented. And I actually think he would probably become the best runner in that backfield. I don't know if they ever give him the usage, but I think Melvin Gordon is a dude that if you are looking to add some RB depth and hope for like a playoff run where he gets a lot of the work. I think there's a possible upside play here with Melvin Gordon. So again, a lot of ifs, a lot of maybe this, a lot of maybe that, a lot of we don't know what the fuck's happening over here. The last backfield that we can say that for is the Jets backfield. So Michael Carter sprains his ankle. Apparently it's a low ankle sprain, not a high ankle sprain. So you know, keep an eye on that. James Robinson was a healthy scratch. If Michael Carter is out, I assume they'll probably make James Robinson active again. So he would actually become my favorite pickup in this backfield. Zonovan Knight filled in pretty well. Bam Knight, good college player. We liked him as a brand coming out. Zonovan Knight had a ton of touches. I think he had maybe 16 carries and then three catches. So he was heavily involved in the offense once Michael Carter went down. Ty Johnson was involved in the passing game a little bit. So it'll probably be a committee, which makes it really difficult to love any of these guys. They're playing against Minnesota. Um, not necessarily a tough, tough defense, but I would say whoever's the pass catching back is probably the one that's going to get the most work back here, which might be Ty Johnson, but I don't want to play Ty, Ty Johnson whatsoever. So these are all just names that we got to be really, really conscious and aware of. So we'll just recap it real quick. In Pittsburgh, my the order of the guys that I would like would be Warren, Benny Snell, Anthony McFarland, if Najee Harris misses time. In Vegas, if Josh Jacobs misses time, you obviously like Zamir White. I think Amir Abdullah would be a decent PPR play as well. In San Francisco, it's Jordan Mason, then Tyrius Davis Price. If Tyrion Davis Price, if Chris McCaffrey doesn't play. KC, I said Melvin Gordon's a pretty decent uh player to keep an eye on. In Jacksonville, if ETN misses time, it's Jamichael Hasty, it's Thrill Henderson. It's Snoop Connor. All right, that's all the fake news about running backs that I can give you right now. At the wide receiver position, we talked about Traylon Burks. Elijah Moore finally had his first fucking sighting with Mike White under center. So I think he becomes uh, a decent pickup because we know he's super talented. And maybe Mike White just changes the entire shift through this landscape of this entire team, which would maybe get Elijah Moore back on the field in good graces. Elijah Moore is definitely a guy that I would like to pick up. Zay Jones had a monster game, and now he plays against Detroit. And he's seeming more and more like the wide receiver one ahead of Christian Kirk over these last two or three weeks. So maybe that string of luck just continues into the playoffs, and you got yourself a nice little wide receiver two, three action right there. James Williams eventually has to get back on the field. I hate to sound like a fucking broken record over here, but it feels like James Williams' time is coming. So stash him if you can. Michael Gallup finally had a big game, but like a big game, right? We're all excited about like a five for 69 appearance. Like finally he fucking had it. He's still like barely nine. I don't even think he's nine months removed from the ACL tear yet. So like not his fault, but it's our fault for continuing to act like he's going to get back to his ceiling. So Michael Gallup, I'm not as excited about. Nico Collins though is a dude that we need to have on our radar because they play against Cleveland. 
poor defense. Deshaun Watson back, probably more on the high scoring side of things. Nico Collins is getting a ton of targets, nine targets, 10 targets, eight targets, every single game. Seems like the wide receiver won there in Houston. So I like Nico Collins out there. Isaiah McKenzie, Paris Campbell, some slot wide receivers. Sky Moore to keep an eye on. Got to see what's going on with Juju because he didn't play a lot of snaps on Sunday for whatever reason coming off the concussion. That's not something that lingers. Justin Watson played 100% of the snaps, but this is kind of just like a carousel of wide receiver production. We never really know what we're going to get. But if I have to choose one guy that might break out over the course of the second half of the season, it would be Sky Moore. I mean, he's getting five to six targets a game. He is probably the most explosive player on the offense on the outside hashes. So I think he's worth a look. Uh, There's literally no one really worth worth a look at the tight end position besides Foster Moreau, who scored a few times in the last few weeks. They get the Chargers, who give up points to the opposing tight end. Uh, Foster Moreau's just been a big piece of the offense since Darren Waller went to the IR. Far as defenses to pick up, uh, this is basically when I started stashing defenses. Like I have Seattle on one of my teams that I picked up last week. I think that's what you got to start doing is looking two weeks ahead for defenses to stash for this week. Uh, Baltimore's defense, if they're avail- available, minus eight against the Broncos at home. Cleveland, they're seven point favorites on the road against Houston. Seattle, eight point favorites on the road against the Rams, who obviously don't have Stafford, they don't have Cup, they don't have Allen Robinson anymore. They might be available. All the other ones, obviously, like Cowboys are big favorites, but they're owned everywhere as are the Eagles, as are the Buffalo Bills, etc., etc. As we look to next week, like the Raiders play the Rams on Thursday Night Football. Cowboys play the Texans, so whoever has them, auto-fucking-dub pretty much. The Ravens play the Steelers, so Kenny Pickett's like, eh, he's been a little bit turnover-prone. I think that'd be a good a good grab. Seahawks. So Seahawks are probably the premier pickup this week because not only do they play the Rams this week, but they play the Panthers next week at home. So they should be heavy favorites in that game. The Chiefs play the Broncos on the road, so the Chiefs obviously, you know, they're just a good defense and a team that you want to be playing. So yeah, that's the waiver wire for this week. Make sure you go subscribe to be a Big Dog member on bdg.co you can get our waiver wire rankings our fab suggestion the budgets and all that good sheesh and then go hit the Ramondre stevenson line on prize picks it's sitting there for you use promo code bdge and it'll get you a 100 deposit match and i'll see y'all tomorrow love you bye